This is so funny. I'm reading the directions and it says to count the leaves. Put so many leaves in to brew. So I've counted out in groups of five, 24 leaves. I really don't think this is accurate. That comes to 0.3 ounces. So I am going to do two ounces. I normally try to do about five ounces. So today we are tasting this China Chun Mi from uh, T. Guy Schwander. And we have a lovely view out the window of lots of daffodils. Great tea views, birds and flowers. Here's what the leaves look like in the morning sunlight. Um, these leaves are in the shape of eyebrows. And there's a couple, like one right in here. It's kind of a circle and it's brown and you see right above it, there is one that's more like a stick. So there's a few that are different from variety, but if you look at this one right here on the edge, it is shaped like an eyebrow. Let's see if we can pick some more out. They're not all quite shaped like an eyebrow. I mean, this one here is even straight. So we got kind of a variety here from the uh, eyebrow theme. Okay, so here's what the wet leaves look like with a very short first steep. They're a beautiful green color. And here's the color of the liqueur. It was so fun when I poured the water over the leaves. The, the leaves were just twirling and dancing. But there's the color in the cup. So this is the third steep and I went for a full minute and actually timed it. But I pulled some leaves out. I thought you might enjoy seeing what the leaves look like. And the watercolor is still yellow. So with the reviews on this tea saying it's so astringent, it's great for mixing because it's so astringent or blending, uh, that it's great for sugar and honey and I got none of that at my two grams. I'm going to try this again at my normal five grams. So I did a timer for a full one minute on this five ounces and there's what the leaves look like and we still have a very um, yellow liquid only I saw this before but didn't mention it one of the reviews said something about dusty and I do see a lot of floaties so the China Chum Mi and uh, this uh, means or translates to precious eyebrows. And you'll also see it as this Z-H-E-N me, Zhen me, I'm assuming. But that is a Hanyu Pinyin, which is a simplified Chinese, also just commonly called Pinyin, uh, which is the official romanization system for standard Mandarin Chinese in mainland China. Taiwan and Singapore. So you also see it as Chun Mi with M E I. I um, see it more often now on the internet that way, but uh, this Chun Mi is what was on the package. This uh, Chun Mi one word is also seen. So if you see this tea listed in any of those ways, it's the same tea. So um, the curved shape of the dried leaves is what give it, gives it its name of the precious eyebrows. So it's supposed to be kind of shaped like an eyebrow shape. This is off of a Babel Carp. This one and two in the translation 
I uh, learned was um, how it, it's pronounced, like where you put emphasis on the word when you're saying it, and I found that very interesting. And so you see it literally translates to uh, precious eyebrow. Uh, I bought this from T. Geishwander. Um, I wrote that wrong. It is, get my package, G-S-C-H. I just left off the G. <laughs> T. Geishwander. There's today's date. This is a green tea out of China. So it's from this Yangtze or however it's pronounced <laughs> province in China. Although my book said it was from Yunnan province. So I was thinking maybe it was from multiple locations. So I found on Wikipedia that it does say that it's originally from Yangtze, but now other places. So I've got the original source one. Here's a map of the provinces of China, and I kind of circled here in red where this province is located, just above the, the common well-known Fujian. Um, Union, of course, way over here. And so um, that's where this tea is from. Processing. Uh, each uh, leaf, this is from my book, is rolled at the correct temperature and for the correct amount of time to get the correct curve. So um, they make it out to be, this is a special tea because it's a very special technique, but as we saw in when I observed the leaves, they weren't all that perfect, correct curve. So I'm not sure what to think about that. Um, from the website called Simple Loose Leaf, um, it says Chunmi is a pan-fired tea. So um, I found that to be accurate as the roasted flavor uh, comes out. So this is from the T. Geishwander website, um, tightly curled, dusky green leaves. Um, an attractive everyday value, this tea from the Yangtze province is full in body with robust smoky chestnut aroma chased by subtle sweetness. So, um, uh, the Wikipedia also, they said dusky, but it suggested dusty appearance. So I think that's kind of uh, similar what they're going for. And um, I actually think that came out maybe in the dustiness that I saw in the actual liqueur. Uh, came off the leaves and was in, in the liqueur. Um, and it's suggested it's generally more acidic and less sweet than other green teas. So I was set up. I don't like acidic teas. This was a setup to me thinking I am not going to like this tea. And the Simple Loose Leaf uh, website um, says it's vegetal and nuttier flavor. Um, that can be light and more intense depending on how the teas were made. I did find that out, uh, as you will see as we go on. It did depend on how it was made. Um, it was very light with only two grams and uh, not so light with uh, five grams. This suggests a smokiness. I didn't get smokiness. This suggests a uh, color similar to gunpowder. I've not done a tasting of gunpowder, although I've had it before. Um, here again, they suggest it's more astringent than other green teas. Now, I didn't really find that. Uh, um, actually, some of the Japanese teas I had were much more astringent. So um, they suggested it was a uh, Good for drinking with sugar, honey, and milk, and I do not. I try to get away from the unhealthy sugars. So this, again, was a, I'm reading this before I taste, learning about the tea, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, I'm not going to like this tea based on uh, these things that I'm learning. They suggest that it would be great uh, for flavoring and scenting or you think of for blended teas, kind of like they use Assam teas 
uh, for blending because the psalm is so astringent. And so you add other things to kind of uh, lessen that astringency. Um, it suggests that in some African countries, uh, for making mint tea, similar to Moroccan mint, uh, is made with gunpowder. So they say in some African countries, they use this tea with mint. And I, maybe I'll try that yet. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I have some mint in the other room. Um, yeah, but I'm already recording this video, so you won't know what I think about that. Um, and lots of websites suggest that this is a low caffeine, and, and it talks about all the health benefits of this tea. Um, and uh, because of the strong nature of this tea in, in my uh, studies, I should put that in here, in my studying before tasting, it is recommended to use less leaves and a low water temperatures. And the package says, I couldn't believe this, 38 tea leaves, or, or which is about one teaspoon. That's 38 tea leaves. So per eight ounce cup, which is a much larger cup than what I use, 90 degrees Celsius, 194 Fahrenheit for one minute. So I found it totally interesting that they wanted to count the leaves. So I said, hey, I'm going to do it. <laughs> so uh, my, my gaiwan is about five uh, ounces. I've got grams in here. I've had ounces and I changed it. Uh, five ounces, which would be 23.75 uh, leaves. <laughs> based on their 38 suggestion because uh, eight ounces divided by 38 leaves is 4.75 leaves per ounce and you times that by five and you get 23.75. So I counted out 24 leaves and I saw what a ridiculously small amount that that was. Um, uh, yeah, so, so then I went, since that was so many few grams, what was it? Uh, 0.3 grams my 20 my 24 leaves were 0.3 grams and so I um, decided to go with two grams and I upped it to two grams and that's what I started with the color is uh, very yellow um, here it is a light yellow it did get a little bit deeper yellow when I upped it to five grams, but I don't get yellow very much on this uh, spectrum of colors. So that was quite interesting. Uh, it gives me a different feel, a different uh, setting, I guess you could say, uh, when drinking this tea. Um, so when I smelled it, I got, uh, I, I the roasted came out and it was a very light aroma at first and I really the dry was and I really had to focus on it so um, I decided it smelled like sweet hay kind of like the disturbed hay when you're during a hay ride that comes up so you're sitting on the hay and everybody's kind of moving around the kids are kicking the hay and and so it's disturbed hay <laughs> during a hay ride that's what it kind of smelled like and but it suggested that it was a chestnut roast and since i did get the roasted i decided i did kind of identify with the chestnut roast the wet leaves just brought out more of that roasted aroma it was still a subtle taste and so the body was um, very light uh, delicate is the level that's lower and I didn't think it was delicate, but it was very light. Even with uh, all of that dust in it, it still was a light body. A lot of times when you have floaties in tea, it, it really ups the body, but I didn't get that. So astringency. So here's what I was afraid of, and I became not so much afraid. But uh, it was very smooth and low with only 2 grams at 20 seconds and 90 degrees Celsius. <laughs> and uh, so uh, that is it, 
yeah, no astringency at all really with it that low. So it was very pleasant that way. Um, the third steep, I timed it for a full minute and it did add a lot more astringency to it, uh, but it was still nice. And I upped it to the bright light category when I upped the time to the suggested one minute, but it was still nice. So because of my review and the notes and everybody suggesting this was a, a, an astringent tea, I was like, okay, it's not the same as my experience, so I'm gonna test the limits. So I went ahead and brewed it at five grams for a full minute, um, because five grams is what I normally would measure tea out at anyway. And uh, the astringency was certainly greater, and hubby didn't like it at all, but I still decided it was still in the bright light level. The, but on the higher end, like the very high end of the bright light, it hadn't reached the lively brisk level um, yet, but it uh, was close. <laughs> and I didn't find it as bad a, as hubby did. Um, it, it was tolerable. So the second steep, I stayed at one minute and the astringency was back to the lower end of the bright light. Hubby said it was better and um, it just kind of stuck there. And I actually like the bright light uh, level category uh, for teas. Um, so I would suggest going back to what I usually do and for brew it at five grams for 90 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds on your first steep and one minute on the second steep. Uh, that's normally what I do. I start out about 20 to 30 seconds and the first steep and then the next steep I might go to 40 seconds, you know, and the next steep one minute, you know, I, I up it. Um, so I would brew it like I normally brew it. This uh, uh, experience um, had me do it cockamamie <laughs> from my normal way. So the taste, I put the bakery spice category because it, the taste, okay, we're talking with the first brew uh, with only two grams. Uh, and I, um, I should put that in there. It was very light, sweet, almost no flavor at all but i decided it was creamy and a slight buttery flavor um so that's in the bakery uh category the the creamy is and the buttery is um it might have been a bit nutty but it didn't jump out at me it was only because i was looking for it because of all the suggestions of um things during my study. And um, the longer steep didn't bring out any more flavors. And I decided uh, that um, <laughs> this tea is mellow. And I thought to myself, it seems like a really good tea for bedtime or decompressing in the evening. Very mellow. Mellow was like the keyword that kept jumping out at me. But this was with the two grams. Yeah the two grams. <laughs> then I went to the five grams and it was no longer a mellow bedtime tea. <laughs> so you could brew this how you want. It, it is very flexible tea. Uh, so um, the roasted flavor was just dominant um, at the five grams. There was no buttery. There was no uh, sweet it was just the roasted flavor which i like roasted flavors the finish the two grams was airy and soft it was just kind of light not almost there and the finish of the five grams was that lingering of the astringency taste so more of the uh, bitter i could say that and so my rating, I gave it three hearts. Now for green tea, it was actually very nice with uh, the lower uh, two grams. It was actually very nice. 
I really liked the mellow, so I kind of gave it three and a half hearts. I was able to drink it without sugar, even with more grams, so that's a huge plus, and I do like roasted uh, flavors. Um, the tea did stay mostly the same from aroma to taste to finish, so that's an indication of a good tea. Uh, uh, that's always something I evaluate. And the thing of it is why it didn't get four hearts, um, which is a, I loved it because I didn't really love it. <laughs> but I'm going to enjoy drinking it. Um, but it didn't shout out with much character or uniqueness that would make me remember it. It's kind of a, um, it's kind of an non-memorable tea. <laughs> there, kind of a non-memorable tea. So uh, I think of <laughs> um, when I watch um, uh, music contests, and the person, <laughs> I'm going to write that down, I think, of music contests. And the singer is an excellent singer, but is not memorable and easily forgotten. <laughs> so that is kind of why it didn't get a four heart. 